we should be looking down right now at uh, the foaming sea, and uh, to the left of us is the uh, Christian Basin, and uh, we'll be uh, coming over the sea of fertility in the uh, landing site area very shortly. Roger right that. Amazing the number of new small craters are all out wide on your screen as a brilliant white there with a with a ray pattern usually going from each one. Right, they're they're showing up real good, just just like that down here on the screen, Tom. <laughs> And this is Houston. Uh, we'd like, uh, when you're coming along some of this area here, we'd like for you to go all the way from one end to the other on the zoom. Give us a mark when you uh, when you back it all the way off and uh, hold it there for about five seconds, five to ten seconds, and then all the way back to full zoom again. Okay, going full off on the zoom at this time. Okay, we'll take you on the right side. Gene will show you the crater Langrenus. Tom, you're reading our mind. We were just going to ask you to take a shot of that if you could. Moving the camera over to another window of the spacecraft. And there you see the moon's horizon. Jim Lovell described the uh, terraces of this crater on Apollo 8. Okay, Tom, we're getting that picture very good, and that's a tremendous color you got. Langrisness is over to the left of them uh, as they move forward in their orbital path along the moon's equator. Langrisness, the uh, whitish crater in the center of the screen, is about 90 miles in diameter. Okay, Ken, this is Houston. Whatever you did there, if you were uh, if you were uh, playing around with your lighting, uh, that gave us a real good picture then. is almost uh, 100 miles from them off to the left of their path so you can get an idea how large it is. We're getting a real good picture of that central peak now. Okay, oh, Gene, uh, I wonder if you could zoom in on that central peak uh, with that aperture shut down a little bit. Oh, you got it, I'm sorry. 
The walls of Langrenus are about uh, two miles high. That central peak is about 7,000 feet above the floor of the crater. Aaron, over here, moving out of my window. Roger that. And just for your information, uh, your onboard vector looks great. Uh, we're satisfied with it. That voice from uh, Mission Control, the capsule communicator, is yeah, Joe Engel. Okay, we're standing by. Mrs. Stafford, the wife of the commander of Apollo 10, is at Mission Control watching these pictures come in there. There is a tremendous picture. And you can see the horizon in the distance there. Well, that is rugged. That's just absolutely beautiful. Lost our picture there for a moment from uh, Mission Control in Houston. There it is, back again. We're coming right up on uh, Trunches, uh, Papa Kilo Hotel and Golf here, uh, leading into the landing site area. Roger, we're picking them up now. Yeah. See if the uh, fertility is off to their left as they follow this equatorial path around the moon. They're coming up over a range just before the sea tranquility appears over right under them and to their right. And uh, there on the southwestern corner of the sea of tranquility uh, is the landing site where. should very shortly be getting a picture of the landing site number two, which is the preferred landing site for the okay, flight of Apollo 11 in July. Okay. 
Tom's got it out the hatch window. Okay. Just for your info, we're uh, we're seeing the RTV on the side of the window, and it's uh, pretty much in focus. This is the lunar surface. You see how flat those seas seem to be. We should have Kirkberg coming up the other way. Uh, the chief's got it out the right window. He'll be looking to the south. Since the spacecraft is upside down.